Hi everyone, welcome to my kitchen um, at Plant Pure. You're actually in my own home kitchen, so um, Nelson and I haven't done this in a long time. So help us out here. We're trying to figure out whether to go portrait or landscape and all the tech stuff we're not very good at, but we are good at the food stuff. So I'm Kim Campbell and I'm excited to show you a few little things tonight. I'm making Asian dumplings and I really am excited about the dumplings. I usually buy the dumplings, but I've been making them, so that's why I wanted to bring you into my kitchen and show you a little bit about how I do that. Um, do we have people on, Nelson? Is it working? Mm -hmm. It's working, yep. yes. Ask questions as we go. I'm gonna move my island up close to the stove. I have a rolling island, you guys, it's so cool. Um, it's a lot of fun, so I can kind of make my kitchen where I want to make it. So, first let's start out with the cookbook. I just published a cookbook December 14th. It's called Plant Pure Comfort Food. I'm very excited. This is my third cookbook, and I think this one's the best. I say that every time I write a cookbook, but this one kind of comes from all of the learning that, that went on for the first two cookbooks. The pictures are spectacular, so I'm gonna see if I can get Nelson to kind of zoom in on some of these pictures. Um, they're just beautiful. Nicole Axworthy did our photographs, so lots and lots of great recipes, um, lots of photographs. So tonight is Asian dumplings, and we are on page 104 in the cookbook. Actually, I called them Chinese-style vegan dumplings. We also have colds here, so I'm going to preface this in case we get into a little coughing, but I think for the most part we'll be okay. So, I made the stir-fry already because I didn't think you wanted me to show you exactly how to make the stir-fry. So I cheated. I'm all about cheating, especially if I'm in a hurry and I want something that's unique and different. So I went to Trader Joe's and I got these shredded green red cabbage mix blend. And I just stir fried it with some mushrooms and that's it. I'm gonna turn it on just to kind of get it going. And I'm gonna add a little sauce to it and the sauce is in the cookbook. It's, um, it's got some ginger in it. It has some maple syrup, tamari, and some cornstarch. And this is what I call a slurry. And it's gonna thicken when it cooks. And you want this to get really thick and stick together because you want it to sit really nicely inside your dumplings. So I'm gonna add that. If you don't make a slurry with cornstarch or flour, whatever your thickener is, it's gonna get really lumpy. So you wanna make sure that you, you know, get that to dissolve before you put it in the pan. So, all right, so let's get that going. Don't let me forget I have it on here. I have a new gas stove, so this is, my kitchen's a little bit new, and I always cooked off of an induction stove, which was wonderful. Gas is just a little bit different, so I, I'm still adjusting to it, because this is all kind of new. So I have some water steaming, because we're gonna steam the dumplings today. So I fill up a big pot with water, and then I have a steamer. This is a bamboo basket, and this is so nice, because we love Asian dumplings. So what I do is I put, some cabbage inside, because I'm gonna put the dumplings on the cabbage. And the cabbage keeps the dumplings from sticking to the wood. You can also use parchment paper if you want. But then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these on top and let them steam a little bit. And so I'll get that started now. All right, so let's come over here. I'm gonna to talk to you about these dumplings. Bring the camera over here. So typically, when I have people making dumplings, and even in the cookbook, I tell you to buy your dumpling wrappers. You can buy them. There's so many on the market, especially at the Asian markets. You can get wonton wrappers, but just remember that wonton wrappers are thinner, and they're going to break easier. So you can use them, and I've used them plenty of times, but they're square. I like the round ones. Wonton wrappers are just that much thicker. You can also use egg roll wrappers. You can cut them in half or cut them in you know, quarters, and you can roll them up that way. Egg roll wrappers are a little bit thicker than wonton wrappers. You can also put them in here and then just 
roll them up and bake them or steam them or whatever you want to do with egg roll wrappers. They are vegan. So, but I like to make my own because I, I love making pasta and I love making bread and it's just fun for me. So I made a bunch and I put them on this page yesterday and I had people say, are they whole wheat? They're half whole wheat and half white flour only because I haven't played around enough with 100% whole wheat flour, but I did today just for you guys. These are what they look like. And what I did is I put cornstarch in between them so that they wouldn't stick. I made them in different sizes because I wasn't sure what size I wanted. And I've got a great big stack here. See, I, they kept getting bigger and bigger, but these are half wheat and half white. So then as I got these questions, people started asking me, can you do all whole wheat? So I tried it and you absolutely can. So these are what I made this afternoon. And I use white whole wheat flour. So you can see, they're, they're pretty good. My only complaint was that they were just a little bit drier and I think it was because I needed to add a little more water. The flour actually absorbs more water. But you can see the color is a little bit browner. This is, this is white whole wheat flour. This is white flour and white whole wheat flour, if that makes sense. Um, all right, so. Here's what the dough looks like. And you want to kind of knead it. All this plastic. And so you kind of want to knead it. It's like pasta. All it is is hot water and flour. And you can put a little salt in it if you want. Just kind of knead it. It helps to activate the gluten. And the gluten is what makes it kind of get a little chewy like in a regular pasta. I think that's probably good enough. So I'm going to take you over to my pasta maker. This is, it's an Atlas 150. Some of you were asking about it. I love pasta. I think I'm part Italian. I don't know. But I love to roll my own pasta. So what I do with these, well, I'm going to cut this in half because that's a lot. So what I do with this pasta maker is I just run this through. I have it on the widest open space, and then I run it through. Now watch, it won't work for me, but usually it does. I'm going to run it through. Oh, it's working. It's working because we're on Facebook Live. <laughs> okay, the first one always comes out a little wonky, so I fold it in half, and then I run it through one more time. So you can make lasagna, you can make fettuccine and then you want to make your space a little bit smaller so each time you run it through it gets a little bit smaller see so it's getting smaller so now I'm going to run through on a number two and so you can see it's getting thinner and thinner and thinner there's blades back here for making spaghetti. And I'm gonna put it on number three now. See how it's getting thinner each time. I love making pasta. It tastes so good. And this is 100% whole wheat, so it worked out really nice. Just make sure if you're using whole wheat flour that you use more water. Now, okay, so every once in a while you get it like that, just fold it in half and start over again. It doesn't matter. Don't get too caught up in how it looks because the roller will fix it. Do you have any questions, Nelson? Uh, no. They're just watching this pasta happen. All right, so this is number five. I didn't go any further than five. You can make it thinner and thinner. Okay. not being really picky because I know that if I goof, I can start over. So anyways, you get the gist of it. That's kind of what it looks like. And then we'll go over here and I lay it out like so. Hang on one second, Nelson. Let's keep showing that. So, all right, so it's pretty sticky. 
And what you want to do to prevent it from sticking is keep the cornstarch right next to you when you're working and you just dust it a little bit. That just keeps it from sticking. And then you can cut it into any shape you want. I didn't have a perfect round cutter, but I had a little measuring cup, so I just went through and went like that. And now I have my dumpling. Cool. And that was so easy. I mean, all I did was mix water and flour. Some of you said, well, how do you make it gluten-free? I don't know. Um, I think you probably have to use brown rice flours. The problem I have with people going gluten-free and substituting flours is then you end up using a lot of processed flours like white flours and white rice flour and tapioca starch, which isn't all that great either. So I did a little research because somebody was asking me why I didn't use whole wheat flour. You definitely want to use whole wheat flour if you can. There is so much more fiber in whole wheat flour, 300% more fiber. So that kind of motivated me to try to fix it. Hey, Kim, Diane uh, Cherno wants to know uh, what what she mi missed that was bought at Trader Joe's. She oh, just came so on I went to Trader Joe's and I bought, um, I bought coleslaw, you know, these little coleslaw things that you just add a little bit of vegan mayonnaise to, and I used it to stir fry with. And so I didn't have to cut up any cabbage or carrots. It's all done for you. I'm going to turn that off because it's starting to stick together now nicely. So... Now, so that's it. That's all I did. I just I bought the stir fry and I put the steamer on the, the basket on top of the hot water. And now I'm going to lay all these out and make dumplings. So when you're laying out your dumplings, you want to have two things always ready. Your cornstarch. And my counter is, it's not too sticky because I've been working on it. But you, want, you might want to just sprinkle a little bit of cornstarch on your counter so things don't stick. Um, and then, well actually we'll use some of these too. I'm pretty sure that these, these are not 100% whole wheat, are going to turn out exactly like the whole wheat. Alright, so then I go over here and I grab a little bit of um, my stir fry and put it, I don't know, maybe a tablespoon. It really depends on how big your wrappers are. You just put a little bit on top of your wrapper. These are so good and they're, they're sort of fun for parties. And if you want, you can make them up ahead of time. They freeze beautifully. All right, so then I have my water going on. So you wanna make sure you get the sides of them good and wet. And I'm starting with the whole wheat. So we're gonna cross our fingers and hope that this whole wheat sticks together. And then bring them up to the center. I might have overfilled it. And then, you know, just squeeze it really well to get the flour to stick together and then just like you would a pie just go around the edges just make sure that you get it good and close sealed okay so you know these could be prettier probably if I wasn't on Facebook live I could probably sit and fuss with them but I think that looks good enough so you can take it just like that and you can put them on a cookie sheet and freeze them before you even cook them you don't need to you can cook them if you want but you don't need to, you can just take them just like this and put them in the freezer and then put them in a big bag and you'll have them whenever you have company, you can just go ahead and stick them in. So we'll go ahead and do this. So <clears throat> if you haven't already bought the cookbook, I'm gonna put a plug in for the book. Um, there's a lot of great recipes. I know a lot of you were waiting and you got your book December 14th, which is great. If you love the cookbook, please give me reviews because that helps us to get the message out there so that more people are aware that we actually have a new cookbook. Um, and why not walk more people into this plant-based diet, right? So, here we go. Then, you're going to take your dumplings and you're going to put them on top of your... See the steam on that? And you're going to put them in here for about seven, maybe eight minutes. You, you, you'll be able to tell because they'll be... They'll look like pasta. Really, that's, that's what this is. This is just pasta. And I was always a little nervous about making my own pasta. I, I had a pasta maker. And, but this is, if you, if you get this Atlas Roller, it's so nice because you can make lasagna and you can make fresh 
pasta without having to worry about eggs. You can use whole wheat flour. Um, did you season the stir fry with anything? I did. So I'll back up a little bit. So for those of you who didn't, I, I did this ahead of time because I really, this wasn't really a cook along where we cooked together. This was just kind of something to tease you for the cookbook to show you what, what's in it. Um, what I did is I took a little bit of sauce and I mixed in, let me grab all my ingredients. I mixed in some ginger paste. And what else did I put in that? Some tamari sauce, ginger paste, tamari sauce, maple syrup. And I think that, oh, and a couple teaspoons of um, cornstarch. It's a thickener. I just mixed it all up and then I put it in there. And then I made a poison sauce. And this recipe is in the cookbook, and this is so, so good. Um, it has peanut butter in it, it has tamari sauce, it has maple syrup, it has molasses, onion powder, garlic powder, a little bit of Chinese five spice, sriracha, and vinegar. And that's in the cookbook too, I believe it's on page 134. So this is what we dip our dumplings in. So they're cooking. And you, you know, you go in there and touch them every now and then. Oh, they're nice. The difference, I think, with the whole wheat is they're just a little bit, it's going to be a little more chewier. They're going to be good. So I'm going to throw another one in there. We'll make a couple more, and then we'll call it a night. So put, and you know, you could put anything in these fillings. You could put just mushrooms. You could put soy curls in them. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Pretty much, you have know, broccoli. If you want to chop up broccoli or spinach. All right, and then you want to take some water. For those of you who are just joining, we're doing Asian dumplings. And we made our own dumpling wrappers, but you can get your own at the Asian markets. You can buy wonton wrappers. You can buy egg roll wrappers, and these are vegan. I got them in the produce section of the grocery store. Or you can complicate it, and you can make it yourself. I think a lot of people surprise themselves. The more you prepare your own food, you guys, the more you can control the sugar and the salt and the better it tastes. And if you're making something, batch cook it. Like I, tonight, when, when we turn this camera off, I'm gonna finish these up and we're gonna stick them in the freezer so we'll have them for lunch or another meal. All right. I'm probably gonna eat them all. Yeah, Nelson, we, we actually, Okay, so I have to tell you, I, I, we had these last night. We went and saw a movie. Um, we went and saw Otto by Tom Hanks. That's really good. We saw Otto, and then we went to, to Trader Joe's, and I bought some frozen vegetarian dumplings. And, you know, they were okay, but they had some oil in them, and I just didn't feel like I was eating anything all that healthy. So it motivates me to dump, batch cook and make a lot. So, but you know, sometimes, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, Donna wants to know if you freeze these before cook, cooking them. Yes, I, I would freeze them, and I have done that before. Freeze these before cooking. I think it's better, you can cook them and then freeze them, but to me, they're a lot better if you freeze them raw. So what you do is just put them out on a cookie sheet like this, and you know, sort of spread them out so they don't stick together. And then after they freeze, take them out and put them in a baggie and stick them back in the freezer. That way they don't all stick together. These are great um, to make ahead of time. These are nice, you know, usually when I make dumplings, they have holes in them, but this time, well this one has a little hole, but this time, actually they're coming out really well. And if you make them from scratch, they're softer. All right, I'll do one more for everybody. And then, um, We'll sign off. I'm gonna try to start doing a few few more live classes and I think next time we're making a dessert and I think it's gonna have be in the chocolate family and there's plenty of desserts in this new cookbook. This one's really soft but that's that's okay. Like I said don't 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 look too closely at my artistry but yeah. Do you have to defrost these completely before cooking? I wouldn't. I would just stick them right in here frozen 
and then just steam them. Instead of steaming them for seven or eight minutes, you might want to steam them for 10 to 12 minutes. So I think these are probably almost done. Um, and then when they're done, you'll kind of know because they'll be they'll definitely be a little bit more like pasta. They're not quite done yet. Then you make your favorite sauce. You can buy a poison sauce. Um, you can make your own. This one has, I'll go over the ingredients one more time. It has peanut butter in it, maple syrup, molasses. I'm probably going to miss something. Sriracha vinegar, um, tamari sauce, onion powder, garlic powder, and a little bit of Chinese five spice. This is what Chinese five spice looks like. And it's really nice because it has um, some very unique ingredients, anise, cinnamon, cloves. If you don't have shiny spice spice and you don't think you're going to use this, in the cookbook I have a little recipe to how to make your own shiny spice spice. This cookbook's great because there's a lot of spice blends. I have a pepperoni spice blend, I have a Chinese five spice, I believe I have a pumpkin spice blend. Um, but it's all the things that I love that I put in this cookbook. So, all right, so if we don't have any questions, I'm gonna kind of sign off. I know that was short, but I just wanted to kind of give you some ideas about what's in the cookbook. If you haven't got the cookbook, get the cookbook. Um, write me a review, that helps to get the message out there because a lot of people don't know we have a new cookbook. So if you don't have any more questions, are there any questions, Nelson? Uh, just Annette says that your New England chowder is a staple in her family. Oh, it's a staple in our house, too. We love New England chowder. Thank you guys for coming on and joining me. I was a little nervous tonight. Whew. I haven't done this in a long time. I, 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 can, I can talk about food till the cows come home, and if you were sitting right in front of me, I think I'd be a little more relaxed. But for some reason, the, the phone makes me a little bit nervous. But I'll be back, and we'll do some more fun recipes from the cookbook. Have a nice Sunday evening.